we get into our routine of things, right? You know, we wake up in the morning and we have our routine. My routine is wake up, five, sometimes 4.45, I get up, I, of course, like I always share with y'all, I like, kind of thank God that I'm alive. Yeah. And then I grab my phone and I start clearing all my text messages from staff, maybe from the, you know, the hospital. And then I start going through my emails, clearing out the promotions and clearing out all the, and, the social media and then deleting emails that I don't need. So, um, and then I jump out of bed and go into my desk and I do a Devo and do what I need to do for like a good 30 minutes. And then I jump to my elliptical for 10 minutes. At least, you know, I squeeze that in. I mean, I'm not, my goal is not to lose 25 pounds and put it on social media and show you the before and after picture. But <laughs> my goal is to at least, you know, pump my heart in the morning so it gets going for the day, right? Um, and then I had to work, so anyway, but wow, you know, we're, I am so excited that we are here in studio, and those of you watching, we're just glad to have you watching, right? I just want to spend just a few minutes of your time today, really, really just spend a few minutes with, uh, you know, with you all, not take a lot of your time, but really get getting the message out, or the one word that you needed to hear today, to kind of encourage you, lift up your spirits, you know, bring you out of that pit if you're in a pit, or maybe you're not and you know someone and you want to share this message, don't forget to like, subscribe, and send this message out so that we can build a community. Amen? Amen. Well, let's build a community. So remember, I always say this, you don't lose, you always win. I don't care what the outcome is, if it's not what you wanted to hear or what the doctor's report says, but you are a winner. God in you, God through you makes you stronger and more mature and more confident, more bold that we know what God's word says and the truth is, the truth is, right? So I'm going to speak into your lives today. I want to speak to you to you right there where you're sitting. I don't know what, if it's day or night for you, but let me speak into your lives, right? You are healthy, and this is all in the name of Jesus. You are healthy, you are wealthy, you are wise, you're strong, you're bold, you're confident. You are above and not beneath, right? You are redeemed from the hand of the enemy. You no longer, you are no longer his slave. You are victorious. You are justified and forgiven. Your life has been saved because Jesus said it at the cross. It is finished, right? Your life is saved, right? You are more than a conqueror. I want you to believe that for yourself. A lot of times we do a lot of what is called uh, negative self-talk. We bring ourselves down or we allow comments or things that people say about us bring us down. But today we're going to say no more, no more negative self-talk. I'm not going to feel depressed. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to let things hold me down right from what needs to be accomplished for that day. So we're going to get to that point today. Amen. All right. So let's pray. Stay connected. Let's grow together. Share this content. I know some of y'all need a, a title for message. Let's just make it God's plan, right? I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to, there's a song that's called God's plan, but we're really going to talk about the word of God, God's plan for our lives. Amen. All right, so we're going to draw right there. Father God, more of you and less of me. Move me out of the way and just speak through me. I am your vessel, cleared and empty, ready to spew out. In Jesus' name we pray, amen? amen. All right, so Romans 8, 28. And this is in the Amplified Version. I haven't used this one in a long time. I used to use it a lot way back when I was a baby Christian, and I would listen to Joyce Meyer videos all the time. And she used the Amplified Version. A lot. So let's let's use the Amplified Romans 8:28, and we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan. There's God's plan as a plan for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His plan and purpose. So there you go. There is the title of the message, God's plan, his plan, right? And purpose. You know, God can use chaotic experiences for good. So we're going back to the scripture. Chaotic experiences. 
Or he can use the dark place that you find yourself in for good. He can use uncertainty, right? Some of us are uncertain of things. He can use uncertainty for good. He can use rejection. Some of us have been rejected. Some of us go into a place or a group of people and we don't feel welcome, right? God can use that over your life, the rejection over your life, for good. God can use setbacks. Anything that has set us back, maybe our health, maybe uh, you just went through a divorce, maybe you just lost a baby, but God is going to use that setback in your life for good. You see, let's go back to the beginning. Chaos emptiness and darkness was coming to an end when God began creation. Okay? So chaos, emptiness, and darkness was coming to an end when God began creation or human transformation. It was all coming to an end. I don't think God would have uh, would have made chaos, emptiness, emptiness, and darkness to stay that way. No, he saw something beautiful in that stage that he thought, I'm going to bring transformation. You see, he used nothing to make something. So I want you to understand that. He used nothing to make something. So he can use our mess, our nothingness, our emptiness, our chaos, our darkness. He can make something out of it. He might, you, you know, he can use your unworthiness to make you worthy at the right time. You might be walking around all week feeling unworthy and walk into that meeting on Friday morning and flip. You go from worthiness to worthy. Your confidence is, you walk in with confidence like, wow, you know, I answered that question correctly and it was in an awe that everyone was listening, right? And all week you were beating yourself up thinking you were not good enough. And it just takes a split second for God to use your unworthiness to make, it, make you worthy at the right time. Uh, he, if you notice, God started verbalizing and expressing himself to create something that did not exist, right? He started, you know, if you look, go to Genesis, begin with Genesis, you will see the process. He went through a process of creating things. He did not say in one scripture, the earth is, and the humans are living. No, he started, you know, go back with water and, and, and the birds and the animals and then, he started with man, and then he said, well, I might, I have to create the woman because it's not perfect yet, right? <laughs> I'm joking, guys. Come on. Read the scripture. But, but he verbalized something that was not existent. In Romans 4.17, write it down, 4.17, it states, uh, those things which, are, which be not as though they were, right? What does that mean? He started... To use what he had. What did he have? He had emptiness. He had darkness. He had chaos. He still had a vision to create beautiful things out of chaos. Meaning, he had a vision to see purpose coming out of darkness. He still had vision to see your transformation. He can do things with your nothing. He can create things with the chaos. He can create things with what you're going through right now. He didn't have to have it all together in order for it to happen. He needed chaos in his, in, in his sight to say, okay, now we can get it all together. Woo. You see, he, he didn't have it all together. So please do not expect or think that you have to have it all together in order to say, Lord, I need you. The Lord will take you there right where you're at. He doesn't need you to be perfect and clean and not be a liar, not be a cheater. He will take you right where you're at. He, he sometimes, I want you to understand something. Sometimes uh, we have to lose some things or lose some people or, or lose opportunities. Some of us have lost our jobs or maybe some business contracts. And I know sometimes we don't understand why. But let me tell you, I want you to take it as a blessing in disguise. These things have to happen. Chaos has to happen. It's a blessing in disguise. It's the secret sauce to the success of your next level to come. 
And a lot of people don't see it that way. They think, oh, now I'm a failure. I'm not good enough. I'm to lost this. I lost that. I lost my wife. I lost that job. I lost that contract. I'm not good enough. But that's not it. It's a secret in disguise for you to lose some things in order for you to get some things or in order to lose some things so that you go to that next level. So it's the secret sauce to your success to your next level, to your next level. What is that called? It's called transformation. It's called a metamorphosis stage, right? You have to go through the process even when it doesn't feel right. Why? Because it's God's plan. Come on. Okay? It, God's plan is to prosper you. It's not to keep you down, defeated with your negative self-feeding thoughts. No. God's plan is to prosper you. So Come sometimes on. losing those things, sometimes feeling dry or feeling like nothing's happening for a season is a seek it's a it's a secret it's a secret sauce to your success it is a blessing in disguise you got to get ready to shift but in order to shift you got to get you got to be ready to lose some things you got to be ready to lose some people um, it's going to feel dry i say it again i speak it from existence it's going to feel dry you're going to feel like you're stagnated like nothing's happening yeah you feel like you're not part of the plan you're losing your patience you're, you're getting ready to shift. Remember that. And a lot of times the enemy will disguise that and start putting thoughts in your head. You're not good enough. You're a loser. You're never going to get to that point. They don't like you. You're being rejected. You're being left out of the plan. You're being, you, he throws those things to bring you down. But what I'm encouraging you today is that God has a plan. It is a blessing in disguise what you're going through. Don't quit. Keep on even when it doesn't feel good. Keep on. Come you know, on. transition and metamorphosis stage can be really frustrating. It really can. You don't want to go through that process of being transformed into your next level. It can draw the energy out of you. It can emotionally disturb you. It can physically drain you that you start to wake up in the morning feeling like, man, today I just don't feel good. But it's not that. It's, it's in a metamorphosis stage, right? Transition takes a great deal of faith. It also takes a great deal of patience. You might not see it happening now, but there you're in a metamorphosis stage where you are being formed in that cocoon, right? Getting ready. And then I got this message inspiration from my husband because he had to speak this into my life because I was like, I, I got to do something. I feel like I'm not doing nothing. There's more. I know there's more. And I think it's my ambition that runs inside of me that I'm just, I was just born with ambition that I'm like, there's things we got to do. There's things we, you know, I feel like I'm stagnated, but it's not. I'm in a metamorphosis stage where I'm being processed. And it's, to, and, and guess what? It takes faith and great patience to just sit there and wait, right? We got to get to that place where we appreciate where we're at. Wow. I know it doesn't feel good. Yeah. I know it's comfortable. Yeah. I know that, but it, it, we got to appreciate where we're at. It's lonely, but appreciate. It's frustrating, but appreciate. It's draining, but we got to appreciate. You see, we got to own where we're at, period. Own where we're at. Own where we're at. Why? Because you are between seasons and you are between levels. And I know it's fearful when we're between seasons. Let me tell you why. Because I know that we're comfortable right now where we're at. And, 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 and with being in the past, we're comfortable. That sometimes your forward will make you feel uncomfortable and uneasy. Wow. But you got to take that faith. You, you got to take the faith to push forward and stay away from those feelings of fear to moving forward. It's going to take faith to push you forward away from those, feel, those feelings of, of, of fear of going forward. Amen? Transition is very imperative. Very. Transition will help you overcome the hurt you're going through now. Transition will help you overcome what you've lost. Uh, in a state of transition, you will begin what is called a growth process or a growth pattern. Um, the growth is going to separate you from season to season because you can't still be thinking and acting the same way in your new season. 
You're going to be mature. You're going to know when to say, what not to say, how to say. Are you in the, is your attire politically correct in the environment or the group of people you're with? Uh, just things like that. How you present yourself in a meeting. I mean, can you imagine I'm in a, a meeting with physicians and I'm all, yeah, uh-huh. Uh, I think we should do that. No, that's not the way you sit. You are sitting in, in the room with intelligent people, right? You got Paul, that was probably the wisest pa uh, pastor that uh, you know wrote most of the New Testament book. Can you imagine sitting in his presence? Yeah, Paul. Uh huh. Yeah, I understand that scripture. I know what you mean. Like you just can't. You got to present yourself properly. So every season, you're growing. You're maturing. Something's got to happen. So the moment that you go from season to season or your transition to a, another level or another dimension, something is happening. What's happening? You're getting wiser. Your emotional breakdowns are less. Your depression is being lifted up. Your oppression is not hovering over you anymore. God is preparing, prepa yeah. propelling you to growth, growth, power, and progress. He's propelling you to that. He wants you to grow. He wants you to use his power. He wants you to progress. He doesn't want you stay, uh, staying behind with no purpose, staying behind so the enemy plays you like a puppet. No, your faith and your trust is going to grow stronger when you continue to remain focused with God's plan. You see, God is shifting you, so you got to continue to grow. And I want you to understand that it won't always be comfortable when you're starting to grow. It's not going to be comfortable when you're starting to transition. It's not going to be comfortable when you're going from level to level. But in order to walk into your new season, you got to fully understand that you are victorious. You are an uncommon achiever. You are the daughter of the Most High. You are the son of the Most High. You are the apple of his eye. You're more than a conqueror. I know, I want to get up and preach this message, but i got to stay remaining seated here. But but you are an influencer. You are that great mother, that great wife, that great husband. You get my point, right? God has a plan and God wants, God will come through for us. It's a transition. Just be patient. It's a metamorphosis stage where you feel an uneasiness. You feel like going and running like 10 miles because you know that there's something coming. But be patient. It takes patience and it takes great faith. Great faith. God, he, God wants us to live this life that's limitless, right? It's limitless, without boundaries. Life with freedom. Life without indifferences. So you have to stand your ground and let transition take its place in God's timing, right? So today, tell the enemy, I'm going to walk into my new season, but I, don't, I will not let you interrupt my step. I'm not going to let you interrupt my step. I'm not going to let you interrupt my walk. I'm not going to let you speak help. I'm not going to let you help me speak negative to my thoughts. No. Amen. All right. So I want to bless you right there where you're at. Thank you for connecting. Understand that transition of metamorphosis stage requires great faith and great patience. Meaning you stay put. Don't quit. I know you're not alone. I've been there. We've all been there. Stay put. Great faith, great patience. Amen? Wow. Wow. All right. So let me pray for you right there where you're at. Uh, let's pray together. Father God, today we declare we are victorious and we will overcome all obstacles that may come to us this week. God, you have a great plan for us. And we ask that you protect us, you defend us, you direct our steps. New week, new you. Be empowered, be engaged, stay connected. Love God, love people, serve others, and change the world. All right. Woo! Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You know, it's always great to be with you all. I want to say thank you to all our generous givers. I'm going to speak a scripture over your lives now as you give. Philippians 4.19, And God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Be blessed this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.